to everyone. It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. How you doing? Good. You look good. You sound good. I'm not close enough to know whether or not you smell good. But I do know God is good. Yes, yes. If you are visiting with us, uh, you are our honored guests, and thank you so much for being a part of the fellowship here at the Fifth Ward Church of Christ. Our elders will acknowledge all of our visitors at the end of our worship service. If you're watching by way of live stream or by way of uh, cable uh, television, thank you for tuning in. We hope and pray that we can say something that may touch your heart this morning, that may inform you uh, and even may challenge you this morning. If you have a question or you need to talk to someone, if you'll call the number on your screen, now, if you're live streaming at 8 o'clock, nobody's on the phone right now, but someone will be there on the phone after 10 o'clock uh, this morning, and we'll be more than happy to minister to you uh, even this morning. But we'd love to see you uh, when you're able to get up. Uh, those of you that's in the hospitals, those of you that are, that are at home and wishing you could be here, we wish you could be here also. And we will continue to keep you in our prayers as you try to recover, as you try to feel better, uh, because we miss you in our fellowship. Uh, this morning, I want you to, to join me in a message this morning. Last week, I started a, a, a kind of a mini series and I entitled it, May I Categorize You? Uh, and we don't want you to be offended by me asking that question because a category simply just identify uh, realities. And so, so uh, there's nothing wrong with being in a category. The thing is, you don't want to be in the wrong category. Uh, because uh, even in the Bible, God and Jesus, when he was on this earth in Luke chapter 19 and verse number 10, he said, for the son of man has come to seek and save, to save those, save is one category, those which are lost. And lost is the other category. And, of course, and, and in God's eyesight, there are only two categories. And uh, you're here this morning, the saved and perhaps even the loss. Uh, sometimes we don't realize we lost. Uh, we talked about some of the categories of the laws. Last week we focused on the unchurched. And unchurched is just a label for those who had not been exposed or hadn't been brought up in a church setting. And I'm talking about any church setting. But the Bible recognizes only one church. It talks about only one church. Uh, you have those that are the procrastinators, those, those who've heard the word of God, uh, and they even know it, and they even know it to be true, but they just won't, won't, won't commit to it. We talked about those on last Sunday, last Lord's Day. And this morning, uh, we want to, to talk about a fairly delicate uh, subject, and it's the religious lost. The religious lost. And I hope you receive this message in the right way. And uh, those of you that's in the Lord's church, as members of this church, the Fifth Ward Church of Christ, I, I, I hope it even, even stirs you up this morning because, see, some of us, when we say the religious loss, you as members of the Church of Christ or the body of Christ, you think we're talking about folk in denominations. Well, Amen. Well, but, but it can be talking about us. And, and, and we need to recognize that and never, ever forget that. Uh, I, I want to give some examples. Uh, time won't allow me to give all the examples. But those of you that, that, that study the Word of God and know the Word of God, especially the New Testament, uh, did you not, do you not, we know that you probably recognize that primarily the, most of the letters of the New Testament are written to Christians, are written to Christians. You know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the gospel books that talk about the life of Christ. But then the history of the church of Christ, some of those, those of you that attend our academic classes, we just finished a class on the, on the history of the church in Acts. Because the, the, the origin of the church that God's, God ordained on this earth began in the, in the letter of the book of Acts. And this, this semester, we're going to get more in detail on the book of Acts in that, in that academic in our Fifth Ward Church of Christ Bible Institute. If you, so those of you that care to take that class uh, beginning on, on this coming Thursday. 
But, but, but the other letters, you know, Romans, uh, First and Second Corinthians, First and Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, uh, uh, Titus, uh, Timothy, uh, uh, Hebrews, James, John, First uh, John, First and Second, Third John, even Revelation. All of those letters are written to the saved, to the saints. Some of them to churches, some of them to individuals like Timothy and Titus, to preachers, but it's written to, to Christians. And so, 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 what are you saying, Brother Gary? Well, in the book of Acts, in the letter of Acts, you find several conversion stories where an individual is, individual, depending on how they respond to the word of God, they are either saved or lost. And, 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 and when you read all of I wish I had time to read all of the conversion stories. You, you, that's your homework. And there, and there are, we, we challenge our preachers and our preachers for how many conversions. There are at least 13, uh, 14 literal conversions uh, illustrations in the book of Acts. And the surprising thing is that most of them, most of them, are converting somebody who's already religious, who already has a knowledge of God. And I want to take a few examples. You listen closely because what we want you to do, if you're watching by way of television, if you're here this morning, what we want you to do is to analyze whether or not you have truly been converted according to the word of God. No, no, we're not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but the Bible says, you shall know the truth. Only the truth will make you free, according to God. Jesus says, I am the way. There's only one way to get to God, according to the will of God. Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, well, that's a powerful passage of scripture. But he that does the will of of my father in there. That's why we got so much religious division in the world today. And, 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 and those of you that's members of this body, um, we, this month I'm preaching evangelistical. I, we're getting to the details. We want to make sure we, we, this is the beginning of the year and we want to start off on the right foundation. And we want to keep our identity, our distinct identity that, that, that distinguishes this body from, from not, not trying to be different from anybody else, but we want to make sure we're lining up with God and God alone. And so, 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 sometimes it will step on some folks' toes. Sometimes it will make you say, well, really, am I really, have I really been converted? Listen to this. <clears throat> In Acts chapter 2, verse 5, Acts 2, 5. <clears throat> Now, there were Jews living in Jerusalem. Uh, you know your Bible history, the Jews, the children of Israel. They definitely knew who God was. The scripture says, devout men from every nation under heaven. The word devout means religious. That's what it means. So they knew God. They knew who God was, does everybody in here know who God is? I don't you have to raise your hand. I know you know who God, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be here. They knew God. Yet, I don't have time to read the whole conversion story. But listen to Acts chapter 2 and verse 40. Acts 2 verse 40. After they heard the message that the apostles preached unto them. After they heard this staring message about Jesus coming, dying, and, 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 and being raised from the, grid, from the grave, they said in verse 40, and with many other words he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying, be saved. What did they Brother Gary? I thought you said they were devout men. I thought you said they were religious men. But he said, be saved from this perverse generation. And so they were religious, but they weren't saved. Why? Because they hadn't obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Again, to be saved from, just to reiterate, to be saved from, in Matthew chapter 2, verse 46, we talking about, we're not talking about be saved from, from, uh, from an earthly punishment. 
It is eternal punishment. So we're talking about our souls this morning. Yeah. Eternal punishment. And so, so when they heard the gospel, they were baptized. The scripture would say 3,000 of them were baptized, and they were religious men, and they knew the Old Testament law. So just because you say, I know God, Brother Gary, don't mean that you're saved. Listen to this one in Acts chapter 8, verse 27, Acts 8, 27. So he got up and went, and there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of her treasure. And he came to Jerusalem, notice this, to worship. Everybody say, to worship. worship. That sounded like us. Didn't we come to worship God this morning? This man was, and he traveled a long way. Some of us, I probably, we, we may have traveled a little ways this morning, but he traveled a long way. That means this man, he was showing up wanting to worship God, didn't he? Amen. Just like some of us this morning. Yeah, yeah. And, and one thing I found, you know, a lot of individuals are searching for the truth. Yeah. The true way, because, you know, in our society now, we got churches on every corner, don't we? I mean, literally, you, it, I would imagine most of us passed at least 20 churches coming here this morning. Why in the world would you come here? I mean, you know, I hope it's for the right reasons. I hope I'm trying to teach what's in the word of God. I hope we're trying to worship God in spirit and in truth. But this Ethiopian unit, he went to worship. Praise the Lord, he went to worship. And he was returning and sitting in his chariot. And he was reading the prophet Isaiah. He was reading the Bible. Amen. He probably read more than we read. Question. Was he a good man? Question. Was he a good man? Are there some good people in the world? Are there some good people in our families? Are there some good people in our neighborhoods? Good don't save you. Good in and of it. You know, you, there are a lot of good people in this world. Yeah. Notice this. Good makes us good, makes us good. See, even when we say somebody's good, you, you say he's good, she's good, he's good. You really don't know if they're good or not. Because you're not around them all the time, right? And the Bible said all have sinned and fallen short of God. See, I can be good in front of you, and I can be robbing folk behind your back. Amen. So, so, so first of all, you, me, I, we can't classify folks as good, really, because we don't know everything about them. Amen. Sometimes people do good works out of guilt. I robbed, I robbed a bank for $100 million, so I'm going to donate $10 million to the boys club. And they're going to have me on the news and say, Gary, that's a good man. Look at that man. Ooh, ain't he wonderful? Amen. Now, last week, I alluded to you. I'm not, this is not a pet peeve. Now, I alluded last week that our sisters and our young men need to watch R. Kelly, uh, our, the R. Kelly special, and, and, uh, and, and it's still bubbling. I'm not, I'm not going to say a lot about it, but you know, R. Kelly wrote the song, I Believe I Can Fly. That's, isn't that a beautiful song? Oh, you say what you will to me. So many graduations and songs, I, can, I believe I can touch the sky. You can sing it with me, couldn't you? If I, I think of, let's see, I think of, uh, Diane, I, th I, knew, I knew you could, I knew you could. <laughs> Spread your wings and fly away. That's a beautiful song, isn't it? No. Now, I don't know enough about R. Kelly, but, but I know what I saw, and I know enough people say stuff about him. And you would think a person that could sing a beautiful song like that, he gotta be good. Not necessarily so. So, so get off that kick. What, what, what about this good lady that lived? You just stop. You're not God. You don't know who's good or not. This eunuch was reading his Bible. You read the rest of the story. This, let me drop down to verse number 35. He, it didn't under, he didn't understand what he was reading, which is out many of us many times. And the Bible says, then Philip, verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth and beginning from this scripture, he preached Jesus to him. Now, he was reading the Bible, he was reading the Old Testament, he was reading this passage that was talking about Jesus, and he didn't even know it was talking about Jesus. And Philip explained it to him, what, what, what it meant. He preached, he wasn't just saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He preached the doctrine of Christ to him. 
Now, now, listen to this in verse 36. And as they went along the road, they came to water. He was, he preached Jesus, so he taught him about baptism. Now, this is, don't miss this part now. We, you, you analyze your, he taught him about baptism. And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe. That's why when the person stands before we take their confession and, and we say, yes. I believe that, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Philip, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch, did, did that, and he was baptized in water that same day for the remission of his sin. Yeah, but, but he was already religious. That's like a lot of individuals think in their mind right now, I know I'm all right with God. Because I'm a good person, I pray every night, and I, 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 you know, I might not go to church, but I know I'm all right. You do? Really? Based on what? Based on your own intellect? Based on your own convenience and your own decision? Who made you? Mm, 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 mm. Watch this one. Listen to this one in Acts chapter 19. That's why I want to I read a number of them. I don't want you to miss this. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. The, no, excuse me. I tell you what. Drop down. Drop down, if you will, to Acts chapter 16, verse 4. Acts chapter 16, verse 14. Acts 16, 14. A woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple fabrics. Notice, a worshiper of God. Good lady. Doing good deeds. A worshiper of a worshiper of God. What do you mean a worshiper of God? See, the Israelites, they worshiped in the Sabbath, in the Sabbath temple. They worshiped under the old law, old law practices. And obviously this lady either worshiped, he offered sacrifices. Notice what else she was doing. This says, was listening, and the Lord opened her heart to respond. This is a key. Because, see, if you're going to be saved, you got to listen. Amen. Amen. And we, we quote the scripture every Lord's day from Romans 10, 17. So faith comes by. And hearing by the word, you got to listen, not just hearing the words, but listen. With, notice this. He op he, 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 uh, uh, the Lord opened her heart to respond to the things, to, to the things spoken by Paul. This, this sincere, beautiful sister who worshiped God was not saved, but she listened to the gospel. And the scripture says in verse number 15, and when she and her household had been baptized, this is why I understand if somebody's teaching you that baptism is not necessary for your salvation, that is false doctrine. And if you were baptized under that pretense that baptism, you can get baptized later on because when you once you pronounce that you are, that you receive the Lord Jesus in your heart, you are saved. If, if you got baptized under that pretense, that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the Word of God. And so, but Gary, 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 that's that's what I did. I was in another church and I, I did get baptized, uh, but I don't, you know, I got baptized. Uh, Five weeks later, uh, they do it twice a year, and I was baptized. That's because they were not teaching that baptism is necessary for salvation. And that's why you did that. But if you did that, that is not the baptism of the Bible. With all the love I have. And I've been in this church, I've been believing that for 30 years. My granddaddy, what you need to be concerned about yourself right now is yourself today. More than anything else. Well, what about them? Well, 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 listen, 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 listen. Nobody's God. Nobody's God. And, but you know the truth. Once you know the truth, you still going to lean on the past? Oh, Lord have mercy. I'm just, I'm just reading, I'm reading from the word of God. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen, listen to another one. Listen to, listen to Acts chapter 10, verse 1. Acts 10, 1. Now, there was a man of, at Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion, what was, called, uh, what was called the Italian cohort. Notice verse 2. A devout, a religious man, and one who feared God with all his household and gave many alms to the Jews, Jewish people. And notice this. And prayed to God. Wait a minute. Bro. Wait a minute. If, if he not saved. He prayed to God, the scripture says, continually. Then verse 47. Uh, the, the, but this, is, this is called me. I mean, you read the rest of it for your, for your hearing. But, but, but now I know he was saved, huh, Brother Gary? Not according to the scriptures. Now, this is a unique case because he was a, he was a, Jew, he was a Gentile. He was a Greek. 
And the gospel went to the Jews first. But listen to verse number 47, verse 47. Surely no one can refuse the water for these to be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we, we did, can he? And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to stay on for a few days. Cornelius was not saved according to the scriptures. Although he was a, although he was a, a devout religious man. Although, although he was a praying man. He was, a, he, was, he was dedicated, and all he gave his money in the name of the Lord. I began last week, I, when you were talking about that, I, I put $3,000 in the pot. That money don't save you by itself. Wow. 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 Let me read to you another one. Let me read to you another one. Listen to, listen, to, listen to Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verse 5. Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verse 5. This is what you, you, you now, Paul's name was Saul. It was Saul. And Saul persecuted the church. And Saul is attributed to, through the Holy Spirit, at least 13 letters of the New Testament. And the Bible says about him, he says about himself, I was circumcised the eighth day. That's what the Jews did. Of the nation of Israel, I was of the tribe of Benjamin. I was a Hebrew of Hebrews as to the law. He said, I was a Pharisee as to zeal, a persecutor of the church as to righteousness, which is in the law. I was black. Paul says, I was top of the line Jew, top of the line Pharisee. I knew all the law, all the Old Testament. But did you not know Paul was not saved? The Bible says in verse number seven, but whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. This is, the, this is one of the reasons why even individuals who hear and know the truth, and, and this is touching, those especially who are leaders, who are preachers, who are Bible school teachers who hear the gospel for the first time and they even read the gospel and but they 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 know what's right but they won't obey it because they got too much to lose. Yeah, yeah. And I've witnessed it personally myself, talking to individuals. I was talking to some brothers on yesterday, and I, I was allowed to preach a funeral at a denomination church, at a denominational church, and um uh, a sister asked uh, the preacher there, could I preach the funeral? And, uh, and he agreed. Uh, but he was, he, was, he was out of town. He was going to be out of town. He was not there, but a number of other preachers were there. And I, I, preached, I preached the funeral. And uh, I, I simply preached a, a gospel message. And so what, what, what do you mean gospel message, brother? I preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I preach that, that Jesus is coming again one day and Jesus is coming for his church. Amen. And, and when I got through preaching, I mean, you know, the, 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 the church was, I mean, they was hooping and hollering and praise the Lord. And, 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 and I mean, the brother, the preachers in the back, they was a, you know, preach, amen, amen, amen. And I wonder, do they know what they're hearing? But, but, but after the funeral, I found out they did know what they were hearing. Two of the preachers, all, all of them were older than I was, and two of the preachers came up to me. One of them came to old brother. He said, brother, he said, brother, and he, one of them called me brother, and one of them called me son because he was older. He said, you, he said, now that's the gospel. That's what he told me. He said, now that's the gospel. He said, boy, I haven't heard that. He said, now you, he, he said, you, he said, you preach the gospel at a funeral. And in my, I was a little confused. I'm like, okay, what else? You? I mean, it's the best time is to do it at a funeral because you got folk in here who, you know, who don't normally don't come to church. And, and the, other, the, other preacher said to, the other preacher said to me, he said, you know, boy, I need to start preaching that. And, and I, I went down as far as you need to be baptized in the Lord's church. Amen. Amen. 
and 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 and, and I, I I think some of them got it, but I don't. I, but but those pre, see one of the things when you when you got a flock, and you and you got an income coming in, and you got something you've been preaching for years, and and, and, and people following you. See, Paul, but but you, this, this but this, listen to what Paul says. He he said this. He said the thing that he said whatever things were gained to me. He said, those things I've counted as loss. He said, look, I, and you, Paul, was at the top of the line, and he gave it all up for the cost. See, it costs something to be saved. Yeah, I, I'm not sugarcoating that. It, it, whether you are, you broke I've been, I've been an usher in my church for, 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 for 30 years, but, but if, if, you, if, if I'm looking at this right, I wasn't baptized into Jesus Christ the right way. Yeah, you, just, you have a decision to make. Well, and, and some people say this. Some people say, well, you know what? I'm going to just take my chance. I'm not taking my chances. Now, don't, you don't need to take a chance on your soul. Amen. Well, but yeah, what if I already been baptized? And I, and you, and we, we, I hear that a lot. Well, I, I was baptized before. I, and I just, I just answered it. If you didn't hear me, let me be a little bit clear. Let me show you an example in the Bible. Go to Acts chapter 19, if you will. Acts chapter 19. And this is for those who've already been back. Because of course, and, and I and of course, if you already been baptized, you think you saved. But but we want to make our calling and election sure. You don't see, you don't want to guess about this one. Listen to the Bible in Acts 19, verse 1. It happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the upper coast and came to Ephesus and found some, listen, disciples. Disciples, learners, these were followers. These were sincere men, the scripture says. And he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And he said, and they said to him, no, we've not even heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. See, their, 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 their foundation, their teaching was flawed. We, 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 it, it, sometimes our teaching is flawed out of, out, of, out, of, out of the wrong motives. In other words, somebody, our teaching is flawed because somebody don't want you to know the truth. But sometimes our teaching can be flawed because of ignorance. Because the person that was teaching you didn't know, was not educated, didn't understand. So they taught you what they knew. Sometimes parents, we as parents, parents, we raise our children. We're raised in this faith. This is what we've been taught. So we just teach that to our children. But we just didn't know. We didn't teach it to them because we hated them, because we didn't want them to know the truth. But this is just what we understood, whatever the reason is. But they didn't know. But, you know, I read the passage on, on, on last Lord's day, on, on, excuse me, on, on last Lord's day, that in Acts chapter 17 and verse number 30, that, 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 over, that, had that, uh, no, that was a time that God overlooked ignorance, but now he commands all men, notice this, everywhere to repent. He's, now there is no excuse. Don't use that excuse that my, I didn't know. And that's what he says. And so... In verse number three, Paul said to them, to them, into what baptism were you baptized? So they had already been baptized. And they said, into John's baptism. And, and some of you, listen to this, some of you know that John baptized in, 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 the, in, in the gospel books, that John baptized preparing the way for Jesus. And so they heard John's message, and they were baptized unto John's baptism, verse 4. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him, that is Jesus. In other words, John was telling them about Jesus. But he baptized them with the baptism of repentance. What is repentance? Turning from sin. What, Brooke, aren't we baptized for the forgiveness of our sins? Yes, we are, but that's not all. Listen to this. Listen to this. He says this. And when they heard this, that's why see, we saw faith comes by hearing him by the word of God. When they were baptized, they were rebaptized in the name of Jesus. See, you can't be. You can't be baptized wrong and be saved. You can't be taught wrong and be baptized right. Amen, somebody. Uh, and and so, so what are you saying? John baptized many of the children of Israel. 
He baptized many of the children of Israel. But if they were going to be in Jesus Christ, they had to be baptized in the, for the remission of, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And, as, that, and as, as, as Paul told them in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the only thing that they did wrong. And, they, and, and the Bible says they were, they were, they were, they were baptized again. And, and some of us, we may say, we may say in our mind, well, but yeah, that, that's just a small detail. That, that's, that, that don't, did, does that make that much of a difference? Excuse me. In vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine the commands. That's why, that's why, that's why we don't baptize babies. Amen. Because babies can't even believe. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. Uh, there are other examples even in the Bible of religious folks who were, were, were unsaved and then they obeyed the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And notice this. All the examples that I have read are adults. In other words, they are adults who were indoctrinated in another teaching. They were adults who had been doing something all of their lives, but their hearts became humble when they heard the truth. And they were baptized into Jesus Christ. And I just, uh, you know, uh, uh, those of you that's in the Church of Christ, and I say the church of Christ, the church you can read about in your Bible. Those of you that did it God's way, you need to say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How serious, how important is it, Brother Gary, that we do it right the right way? Listen to Galatians chapter 1 and verse number 6. Galatians chapter 1 and verse number 6. Paul, after these Christians had been converted, he says, he writes to them, he says, I'm amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ. This is one of the reasons why I shown up am reiterating this as strong as I possibly can, because I never, ever as a preacher want to be guilty of leading anybody astray. And, and, and sometimes leading, being led astray, is a, it, it seems like it's a small difference, but it, it, is, it, is, it is different in any kind of way from what the word of God teaches is wrong. And it is error, he said this, for a different gospel, which is really not another. Only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we, Paul says, if I or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we've preached to you, he is to be a curse. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a curse. Amen, Amen somebody. No way. I, I don't want, I do not. Won't God label me a false teacher, a devil, and, no, and I know you do not either. And, and, and to make it clear, he said it again in verse number nine, as we've said before. So I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you receive, he is to be accursed. That's serious business. That's serious business. That's why, that is why I, I don't teach a doctrine that says, Receive the Lord Jesus in your heart and you shall be saved. That's why I don't teach a doctrine that says faith and faith alone saves us. And that's why I don't teach a doctrine that says pray with me the sinner's prayer and I pray a prayer. And your sins are forgiven. And when I finish praying your prayer, I can pronounce you a child of God because I don't find it in the Bible. That's why I don't preach that. Infants can be baptized and be saved and be hit. If you want to, if you want to bless you, if you want me to pray and, and pray over your baby and ask God to bless your baby, that's one thing. But your baby don't need to be baptized because they don't have any sins at that point. It, it might be cute, but it's not, a, it's not in the word of God. And so don't get me wrong. We're not the Grinch and I'm not trying to be the evil person. If you want to get, I just want somebody to come. Pray. I want the elders to come and pray for my baby. Call and they'll come pray for your baby. But we're not baptizing babies. Amen. 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 Well, that's what, that, that's what they've been doing for years. But Gary, b b b b baptizing baby is wrong. Or, or, or it's error if you think you are putting your child in Christ if you're baptizing. 
Amen, somebody. Yeah, that's why, that's why, that's why, that's why we baptize as soon as the point of pronounced belief as possible. That's why there is a sense of urgency when a person hears the gospel and obeys the gospel. That's why we baptize on Sundays, on Mondays, on Tuesdays, on Wednesdays, on Thursdays, on Fridays, on Saturdays. That's why if you come and say you want to be baptized today, we don't baptize you tomorrow because we might not be here tomorrow. That's why we baptize every single day. And, and perhaps there is someone here this morning who is sincere. And we know you, we know you love God. We know, and I, I'm talking about not just this artist, those of you just watching on the way of television. If you're in Houston, Texas right now, and you in a you 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 are within a hundred two hundred mile radius of Houston, and you say, "Well, forget I've never heard this message before, and I and I've, I've never heard it this clearly before, and I didn't know there were that many examples in the Bible of people who knew God and who were religious and who were doing good, and I, I didn't know it was like that. I didn't I didn't know that I had to obey God when I hear the gospel and be baptized. I didn't know that. Come on, get baptized. Amen. Amen. We'll wait on. Will we wait on them, church? They look, all them saying, yeah, but they're not going to wait. Well, some of us will wait on you. Yes, we will, male, female. If you're old enough, now, we don't baptize babies, but if you're old enough to understand right from wrong, because we don't want our teenagers, stop procrastinating. Stop waiting. If you, are, if you are 12, you know right from wrong. Amen, somebody. You know when you're doing right. But we're giving, I'm not ready right now. I'm, not, I'm ready. I'm going to have my fun. You, just because you having your fun don't mean you won't be lost. You're saying it like, well, if I don't get baptized now, I, you, you, if you, you, you know right from wrong, you need to be baptized, and you need to run this Christian race. It's, it's going to be a struggle. You're still going to have some issues in life, but you want to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. In all of your struggles, so some of you teenagers that have been putting this off, it's time. Yes, it is. It's time for you to make the commitment. We're not going to twist your arms. We're not making anybody get baptized. But why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized. Let me say this in my last minute. Is that when we are baptized, we are baptized into Jesus Christ. We're baptized. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sins. And God adds us to his church. Yeah. I'm, not the, I'm not the preacher tell you to get baptized and go to the church of your choice. What, what are you saying, Brigitte? All churches do not teach what I just taught. If, if, you, if there is a church and they are not teaching the basic Doctrine. I, I'm not listen. I'm, I'm talking. And this is the Church of Christ, folks. If they are not teaching the basic doctrine that will get a person into Jesus Christ, don't go to that church. Oh, Brooker, you shouldn't be telling. Well, I'm, let me put it this way. There is only one church in the Bible. I'm not saying that the Fifth Ward Church of Christ is the perfect church and we don't have folks in here that sin and do bad things. That is not what I'm saying. But if you're in a church that's not teaching the foundational doctrine of hearing the word of God, of believing it with all your heart, of repenting of your sins, of confessing Christ and being baptized in water for the forgiveness of your sins, don't go there. Because according to the scripture, those are things that we must do. And even, even our teachers in, our, in, in the church, see, that's what, you, that's, that's what we need to be teaching folks that are lost. Stop, teach, stop teaching them. If you, you go to a church that, that, that they don't take the Lord's Supper uh, every Lord's Day, you're going to be lost. That's not, the, that's not the foundation of what, that's, that does not get them into Jesus Christ. Just teach them the basic doctrine. And when they get into Christ, we will teach them what thus said the Lord. What we should be doing according to the scriptures. Because, because you know, you see, you start teaching that you need to be in the church of Christ because we right. They're going to come in here and find out we got a bunch of sinners in here. And they're going to start saying, well, that sister right there, I heard her cussing three times. And that brother left his wife in the church. 
But the church belongs to Christ. And if we teach that, we have to keep on teaching them. And so we want you to be baptized, but we don't want you to go home and say, I'm saved and I don't have to come back. Amen. Amen, Christians. So if you're here today, this morning, come to Jesus just as you are. If you're here and you're already a Christian and you have a prayer request, come to Jesus. If you're here and you just need to get something right with the Lord and you need the saints to pray for you, come to Jesus as we stand. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart, in my heart, oh, in my heart, in my heart, oh, Lord, I want, I want to, to be, be a Christian. In my heart, Lord, I want to be more loving. In my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be more loving. In my heart, in my heart, in my heart, oh, in my heart, in my heart, oh, Lord, I, I, I want, want to be more loving. In my heart, Lord, I want to be more like him. In my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be more like him.